Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are heading to do day three of my Pacific Northwest trip. And we are going to be headed down to Oregon to uh, see some friends down there. And eventually we're gonna get to Bandit 46 Garage and uh, hook up with him. And then hopefully we're gonna make it uh, down to our spot in Springfield to meet up with Dan and start checking out some of his dad's uh, mass amount of parts. I can't wait. So do a little road trip. It's about four or five hour drive down to where we're going. Um, and we're gonna stop along the way and just visit a shop or two and see what we find. Let's get started. This stuff's kind of, it's kind of sharp. We have to be careful. And this is heavy. This weighs more than you do. Hokey, but pretty that's a pretty unusual. something early that yeah it's an earlier one once somebody puts a map to it realize it wasn't all that up oh, wow. oh yeah they were they were horrible <laughs> still cool though hey i got a hubcap She jumped up and grabbed it. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, you can sit on the cardboard down there, I guess, for now. What, what do you see? That? Did you want that? No. That's mine. It's mine. No. Oh, careful. Hey.
quick break. Mike here. T-shirts, they're back in stock. Everyone's been emailing us, tons of emails, comments, questions. Just got 300 shirts in, small through 5XL, all three design, well, all two designs, both colors of the flathead. We have hats in stock. We're working on new beanies, uh, prints, stickers, everything's in stock. Head to the website. Link is in the description down below, irontrapgarage.bigcartel.com. Let's get back to the video. Pieces, bought all like cows separate from the back half and everything. No, I got the body in the basket case. It all fit in the trunk of a '59 Chevy. <laughs> when I bought it home, but it all came from the same guy. Had the same kind of find. It was the second one I bought from him. That's the one I put together and so on. Much I had. And then, uh, the same guy actually bought the Doc Gates car. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, time to get gas.
right, so a uh, long day of driving. We stopped and visited Charlie and Kelly at North Palm Speed. And Charlie was nice enough to show me a bunch of his really cool Survivor hot rods and also some of the hot rods he put together. Uh, I was in heaven with all the 32, 34 Ford stuff and Model A's. Super bitching collection. It was really fun to make a quick lunch visit with them. And thank you to Kelly for making us uh, a nice little lunch as well. It was a great uh, little stop along the way. So what we did is we drove through some of the beautiful mountains and parks and and saw just some of the most incredible views to end up right here in Sisters, Oregon, uh, where we are at 406 Garage. And we're gonna show you guys, I know it's, normally I'm talking about Fords, but this is the mother load of International Harvester trucks. So what they do is they go across the high desert and uh, dig out all these internationals. And you can see I'm spinning around. It's getting a little dark here, but you can see there's just internationals everywhere. So we're gonna go into the shop, get a couple little stories about some of the more interesting ones and uh, show you guys what they got laying around here. And it should be a little treat for any of you guys that like these, uh, these old International Harvester trucks. So let's see what he's got. Hi, my name is Ben Palmer and I own 406 Garage. You can find us on Instagram and as well as on the website, 406garage.com. We specialize in pre-1975 trucks and SUVs. We go out and find high desert, rust-free, original paint trucks and SUVs that uh, have a story. Trucks that have a story are a lot more fun to drive and a lot more fun to restore. So we have a passion for international harvesters. There's a few here I want to show you guys that are pretty awesome. All right, so tell me about this really kick-ass truck with the service box on the back. So this is a 1967 International 1100. So this was a half-ton truck. This was ordered brand new from the International Harvester dealership in Haver, Montana, which is northern Montana, big farm country. What's unique about this truck is it was ordered factory with the service body. Um, on the side over there, there's a data plate and a serial number. And that uh, serial number and data plate corresponds to the build sheet and the line set ticket when this truck was built, which tells you the truck was ordered with the service box. It was put on at the factory. This truck was ordered for the dealership and they used it as a service truck, as, it, as you see it right here. It was full of tools, it was full of parts, and it was full of uh, replacement things for tractors and farm equipment in northern Montana. This truck serviced all the farmers for that dealership's region for almost 35, 40 years. When it was retired, it was sold to a local propane company. They added the little crane that you see on the back and they delivered propane tanks for this truck for the next 15 years throughout the same areas of rural Montana. That truck was retired about two years ago and I was able to rescue this truck out of the barn of the owner of the propane company last summer in Haver, Montana. This is a 1971 International three-quarter ton Travelette is what it's called, and that it denotes a crew cab, short bed. I bought this from the grandson of the original owner, and this truck has a very unique story. The grandfather bought this truck originally because he wanted to have a truck to tow his 31-foot Airstream stainless steel aluminum trailer and go to every national park in the lower 48 states with his kids. That was what the purpose of this truck was. Well, he did that with all of his kids, and after he did all that, he decided the truck was still in such great shape, he would keep maintaining it, keep driving it, and take all his grandkids and do the same thing. So this truck here, as you see it today, has got 392,000 miles on it. What's unique about the way he took care of this truck, aside from the fact that we have all the documentation from the beginning, is at 100,000 miles, he took this truck to the dealership, and today you would go in for your 100,000 mile service and they have a list of all the stuff that they would do to the truck. They read them off all those things back in the late 70s. He looked at the service man and said, that's great, but here's what I want to do. He asked them to pull the engine, pull the transmission, and pull the rear end from the truck and rebuild them to factory spec, as well as fix all the brakes and everything else on the truck. They then told him how much that would cost. He said, I don't care, I want to keep the truck forever. At 200,000 miles, he did the same scenario. And at 300,000 miles, he did the same scenario yet again. So the body of this truck and the chassis has 392,000 miles. The engine, the transmission, the rear end, the brakes have 92,000 miles on a full factory rebuild. This is the original color. As you can tell, it has been painted a few times. The color fades a little bit from here to here to here. But that tells the story. The truck was driven, the truck was loved, the truck was taken care of. At one point it was painted and the topper was on here. They didn't take the topper off when they painted it. 
But this man loved this truck, and he told this, his grandson told me the story, and all the documentation supports everything that he did. It's a wonderful truck. We drive it all the time. This is a 1973 International Harvester Travel All. This is a 1210, which denotes a three-quarter ton four-wheel drive. Uh, these trucks, the travel alls weren't super rare, but a three-quarter ton four-wheel drive travel all is pretty rare. I'll tell you why. This particular one has got several options that make it rare. The first option is this winch and bumper, which looks like something today you would go down to the truck aftermarket place and buy. That's a factory installed winch. It is also a PTO winch. It's on the build sheet. What also makes this truck rare is it's got barn doors, which I'll show you in a second. On the travel alls in the three quarter ton, to get a four wheel drive, travel alls mostly were a half ton. To get a three quarter ton travel all, you would have had to buy one out of one, every 112 built would have been a three quarter ton. Then out of that, one out of every 555 was a three quarter ton and a four wheel drive. So if you go back into the 70s and do the numbers, that's a pretty rare truck. And how many are actually left? This truck here was almost $8,000 in 1973. So fast forward to 2020, uh, today's money, that'd probably be roughly 80 grand. Imagine the farmer or rancher who had $8,000 saved up and this is what they bought. That was a lot of money back then. Now, a funny story also about this truck. We've had this truck for a very long time. The back door tells a story. Come with me. So I got this truck from a good friend of mine who owned it for the last 25 plus years. I've had it for a couple years. And he had it parked in front of his work one day, several summers ago. And an old man came in and asked, hey, who owns the old yellow travel aisle out front? And my buddy, of course, said, oh, it's mine. He said, hey, do you want to know how I got the uh, dent in the door? And he's like, really? You know this truck? He said, absolutely, I know this truck. I was working on the ranch when that truck was brand new. He goes, we put that dent in the door when this truck was a week old. He said, you're kidding me. He's like, no, nope, we were working on the ranch. We were using it out in the field, fixing fence. We backed up. We smashed the bumper, and we dented the door on a fence post. So we quickly came up with this idea to build this really heavy duty bumper. We took the door into our buddy in the body shop, had him spray some paint real quick. We had an old Chevy door handle that we put on there, put it back together. And the rancher that owned the property never was the wiser. The funny thing was the only thing he asked about was the bumper. And we told him that was to protect the back from ever getting dented again. So we built a beefier bumper for him. He thought that was funny. All right, so end of the day and we are nice enough, uh, we, we have a nice enough uh, accommodations, kind of a little uh, apartment that he, that's built up here. So we get to overlook all these badass internationals. <laughs> it's not a horrible view. No, so we're gonna go up a little apartment. Should be good fun. Tomorrow we're getting up early and we are going to uh, start digging at parts and a visit with Dan and see all the great stuff his dad came up with should be awesome so I can play the drums and also sleep on a couch or a bed so thank you guys appreciate it I'm gonna go hit the hay and uh, we'll check you guys with the next update see ya